Hey, kids, everybody ready to learn? Yeah! Today, we're going to find out where nutty conspiracy theories come from. And that means we're going to take a little field trip to the crazy farm. You mean Glenn Beck? That's right, little Billy. Farmer Beck is going to show us how little crazy notions are born and then raised up into great big conspiracy theories. Now, weird as this sounds, Farmer Beck starts with an actual fact, like so. Osama bin Laden was unarmed. <laughs> but, but, but that's real. Not for long. Next, the conspiracy farmer plants the seeds of paranoia, like so. Why would we shoot an unarmed man? And then the farmer starts adding the fertilizer. That's not what our Navy SEALs do. We don't shoot unarmed people. Lots and lots of fertilizer. It doesn't make sense. I'm a little confused. <laughs> that means it's working. Then, when the conspiracy theory starts to grow, Farmer Beck crossbreeds it with unfounded speculation. There's a possibility that we did that because um, our, our cover had been blown. We were going to ghost him out. Finally, he adds plenty of doubt to protect his growing conspiracy theory from reality. Why did we do this the way we did? Something's not right. I'll explain a little bit more. There you go. The conspiracy theory is ready for market. I sure hope you learn something. Next time, kids, we'll learn how nuts are made with our guest, Michelle Bachman. <laughs> Bye. I thought you asked me that. <laughs> Holy crap, Ola, man. I, I just cannot believe the right wing is so, I mean, they are just so freaked out and wigged out that we have a president who put his mind to do something, uh, which was to catch, kill, and get intelligence on Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda and all these subdivisions of Al-Qaeda. Uh, Al-Qaeda in Yemen, the Haqqani network, which is an Al-Qaeda network uh, that, that, that uh, is in Afghanistan operating against our soldiers. You know, I, I just I cannot believe how enraged they are at the success of Barack Obama. Now, I do know that they were rooting for his failure, but to demand an apology from uh, 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 President Obama because he managed to do what the previous administration could not do in eight long, gruesome, tortured, literally tortured years is so bizarre a world. And now, of course, the president will go to ground zero tomorrow. He will head to New York uh, to lay a wreath. And that's all he really wanted to do. He just wants to go to New York and lay a wreath. He knows this is a bittersweet moment for New Yorkers. He understands that it's a very, very, very uh, trying time for people who lost firefighters, who lost relatives, who lost, uh, you know, uh, siblings and mothers and fathers. And so he just wants to go and be the leader of the of, of this country and lay a wreath uh, to commemorate all that we gave up on that day. Uh, and to be there in this bittersweet moment with these families and with the city of New York. Uh, and he is being criticized for that, too. Uh, he's being uh, called grotesque. By the way, grotesque, grotesque. Now, remember, we had a president who stood on the burning heap of rubble with a bullhorn and a firefighter and said the whole world will hear us soon. I hear you and the whole world will hear us soon. But they didn't think that that was grotesque. They thought that was leadership to stand on burning rubble like that. But if Obama goes in this bittersweet moment for these families and friends of the lost, then it's grotesque. 